Never mm. done. Uh, yeah, get up in there so we can really hear the mastication. It's one of my favorite oh. words. What are you going to do if hearing Dave eat gets more views than any of your other content? Well, then we've clearly found a niche. <laughs> and as we know, the riches are in the niches. And Monetize we need to go that. with it. What are you looking at? I'm looking at that. Oh, to see if your food's visible on the my thing? Food out. No, leave it up there. It's fine. No one cares. Uh, one detail. Do speak like, yeah, try to stay close. Oh, hey. Yeah, you can get right up in there. That's great. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> when your whiskers are tickling the mic, then you know you're close enough. That's uh, and just uh, the best pickup line. I've just to plant heard. this in your head, you're not the first whiskers that have tickled that mic. So we'll leave. <laughs> let's say that three times fast. That's a tongue twister if there Awkward. ever was one. Do you have a response for my? Did you? Uh, no, I haven't had a chance. Uh, Dave wrote me an offer 17 seconds ago and then sent it to me, and I, I did. I emailed it forward. So we're gonna it, we're gonna withdraw it in four uh, hours. <laughs> yeah, right when we're done with this podcast. Yeah. I can't seem to find time to do the actual If we're job, in here Dave, for four hours, that'll be a problem. No. I know he's got places to be because Faye told me. And uh, yeah. yeah, anyway. Faye never lies. Your, your AI-generated assistant would not give us your number. Yeah, I had to. It was, it was tough. I was like, she's a good gatekeeper. Uh, by the way, we're recording, just so you know. Oh. Are we? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. perfect. Yeah, yeah, of course we are. The, the gems are right in the beginning here. Always, always the case. Uh, well, let speaking, me introduce speaking our... Speaking of gems, uh, yeah. I should have checked my hip iron at the door. Oh, yeah. Here. Gems are a little affected. You want to throw it over on the shelf here? A shelf yeah. over here. Good idea. Uh, see, the old appendix. Oh, that's a big old unit you got there, pal. The gun's not bad either. <laughs> yeah. The old appendix carry. Uh, yeah, it tears me up sometimes. I have I just carry in my pocket now, to be honest. That's the way to do it. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh. I just stick a three fifty seven in my pocket. I don't believe. No, that's a true story. It's, I'll pull it out. It's right here. Right there. No kidding. Yeah, works like a charm. All right. She's she's a tad bit dusty and some dead skin That's in your on pocket? There. All the time. How's your, how are they that loose? I have to specifically find jeans that don't have tiny pockets. This is a big deal in my life. I bought this nice pair of jeans, and they got these pockets that are like three inches deep. And I don't know what you can possibly, you can't even fit a wallet in there. They're lefty, too. That just, just frustrates me. Yeah. I'm, but you're lefty. I'm pretty ambidextrous. I'll outshoot you righty too. It'll be wait, good for wait. our search video. Yeah. What's what's going I'm on lefty. with that? But the watch. I'm wearing my watch on the wrong hand because I I'm a lefty that was raised in a right-handed world, and there was we no all were. there was no accommodation. Are you left-handed? Uh, severely. Oh, that's yeah. right. I remember this now. Yeah. There was no accommodations for us when we were younger. Okay. And, um, when I went to the police academy, it was like a disability for the most part. They just mocked me incessantly at the at the range, especially so. Uh, I used to shoot righty growing up, and I transitioned over to lefty because I'm left eye dominant, and that oh. was yeah. So that was a big deal in my world. This is a big topic for me. Are you done? Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Let's go. All right, hey, today we've got uh, a very special guest. Tyler Riggs with Liberty Inspection Services, but he's so much more than that. And um, I actually saw I saw his name on Dave's calendar. Dave and I share calendars. We share everything. And um, I saw his name on Dave's calendar for today that they were going to get coffee. And I was like, dude, he's on my list of people I want to have on the podcast because I find lies. I find you to be extremely entertaining. You have the same <laughs> sense of humor as me, and I feel like I can say anything to you, and you'll say it right back. Uh, so here we are. And um, uh, we actually met in a men's coaching group men's coaching group yeah have you ever heard of synchronized swimming where they do the underwater i have yeah so it's like that you're gonna say it i'm not gonna say underwater basket weaving <laughs> check a <laughs> uh, long-standing joke uh we, we met in a men's coaching group and um anyway that's it there we go that's how i know him so uh point of privilege the end Great podcast. Thank you, guys. Done. What's the vulgarity policy around here? Uh, oh, you're fine. Yeah. Um, you know, there's like... There's I'm like, not going to be gross. No, yeah. There's slightly vulgar, and then there's like... Yeah, so maybe in the middle somewhere. Okay. Yeah. You're okay to swear. PG-13. Uh, yeah, yeah, like PG-13 from 1985, right? They used to, okay. they said shit, and they said the F word. Yeah. They, they didn't say, say the F word. No, no, no. Oh, I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, no, not in the, not 80s? 85. No? Yeah? No? Yeah? Okay. Anyway, you can. I have. It's fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, you are you, uh, you're like local, but not local. Like you grew up in this neck of the woods, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Been yeah, here yeah. since second grade. My parents, both sides of my family have been in the area since like 
the 1800s. I can't say the same. Well, it's people like you, Seth. Yeah, that this has made why, this place this is, hard to live in. This is your, why your parents m effing transplants from <laughs> California. Okay, so wait. You, can I pause you? You, you yeah. want to go first? You got this. Great, I, I I'm super intrigued right now with the fact that you said your family's been here since the 1800s. Oh yeah, you've seen the show Yellowstone, right? I know, but I got I got to know lineage. like how they get here. I mean, back then it was just on a wagon, Dave. I mean, yeah. Oh, no. When you think about it, North yeah. Idaho was not the place to go no. back in the 1800s. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a true story. My great great grandfather, who was born in upstate New York, he that's where I'm from. <clears throat> legit. Time to show it. He there it is. <laughs> I like upstate that. Idaho. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I'm trying to bring Beautiful. this back. He wrote he was a he was a brick maker and he worked in brickyards in New York. <laughs> And in Chicago, when he was a young man, then like struck out on his own, went down to like Florida, then over to Louisiana, worked in sugarcane plantations over in Louisiana, then went over to Arizona and Mexico and was mining silver down there, then made his way up the West Coast and landed in the uh, like the Oregon coast area, <laughs> built the Portland Astoria Railroad. He's a railroader for a few years, then got on his horse, wow. rode over to here to well north idaho eastern washington area back and forth across the state lines there were no you know state lines and cities but <laughs> landed here in like 1891 and got married and started a family and at that point he was 29. okay uh, that so man had some stories I, he I lived wanna, like 20 whoa. lifetimes yeah i want to make this really clear too if you're listening you, it what you just said you know, I've been, uh, I could go to New York, Florida, New Mexico, Arizona, California, all the way over here. And it, I could do it in probably like five days. Yeah. That was like yeah. years. It was like 12 years. Just yeah. going yeah. from New York down to Florida is months and months, if not a, a year just to make it down there at that time. Yeah. So he was oh, all over months. the whole, like basically circumnavigated the continent, the, the continental U.S., and then landed here and started logging. And that gave way to all of my ancestors being loggers from then until basically my dad is the first non logger in the family. I suspect he was a, a hard man too, like hard as woodpecker lips. Yeah. That's, That's a phrase I haven't heard. Uh, yep. That yeah. was a new one. <laughs> you know, what's crazy about that too. So, I mean, Cordell used to be a logging community. That's how uh -huh. it started. I mean, obviously, and from what I heard, they used to actually cut the trees, throw them in the lake and just let them naturally yeah. come down to the Spokane river. Yes. And that's obviously where the mill was and everything mm -hmm. else at NIC College. So they would just throw all the, the logs in. It didn't matter. They didn't worry about it. They just knew that eventually the logs would make it over to that area. Yeah. And that's how they set up the mill right there where NIC College is. In fact, Prairie Trail was um, the railroad that would go directly out of there. Huh. That big diagonal road that goes all the way up to Rathrum. Yeah, I've seen pictures of the downtown and the mill that was like right where McEwen Park is. It's and, crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, yeah. It's there's the timber out here was wild. I've got photographs from the like turn of the century of my great, great grandfather standing on like decks of logs. There was timber along the Spokane river. That was this old growth, Doug fir timber. They were cutting logs that were like 50 plus 60 inches across back then Holy crap, right whoa. here at the river. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That so nuts. Isn't a little, uh, Ted Kaczynski. Um, I don't want to throw up no? on the, okay. on, like Dave. Yeah, no, I would definitely throw up. I, I mean, you know like, that caffeine that plus nicotine equals the, protein. What's the, can I see it real quick? What's the, uh, Oh, two milligrams. That's pretty light. Yeah. Baby status. Yeah. Um, I, 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 te I was testing out some nicotine gum recently because I was hearing some podcast that was saying that, uh, something about the nicotinamide receptors in your body mm -hmm. and it will keep you from getting sick, blah, blah, blah. So I was, and uh, it's not addictive, just nicotine. That's what I heard. So <laughs> one pack into this nicotine gum and I was like, now like it calls to me like a siren still. Like I like, yeah. Oh yeah. It's been weeks. I, I, I only went through one pack and I was like really starting to enjoy like once a day, I'd have one piece of nicotine gum, Yeah, the mental clarity, like no joke. I, I'm guessing that I probably have some level of ADD prior to being done. You know, back in the day, it wasn't a thing. Um, and it gives me extreme mental clarity. Like I was like, I could be pretty damn productive on this nicotine drug. It's really? very real. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. It's super. I would real. love to see you on it too, because no. you're built similar to me. I think I don't have brain. ADHD. Mm, okay. 
ADHD is invented by drug companies <laughs> hey, to what are we dope up our kids. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently a stimulant. I guess that's why people take Adderall, right? That's the same thing. Yeah, Ritalin. I don't, yeah, yeah. Same idea. They put me on a bunch of that stuff for ADHD when I was a kid. It was it was rough. Well, yeah. in the in the measure of ADHD, I want to hear more about this grandfather. No, no. Yeah, sorry. We oh. got it's way sidelined yeah, there. We were way it. back there. But so they moved here. You said turn of the century. Uh, 18. I have his uh, marriage certificate. Is it and that he big? Got, he they, got, they yeah, yeah, it's, back then? it's, well, it's all in German, oh, so I can't smells. read it, but it's, uh. it's like <laughs> two feet by three feet framed in my parents' house. And it's, uh, I think he got married in 1891. So it was, wow. he was, he wow. showed up around that time. That is crazy. That is crazy. What's the heritage? Where did he come before? Did he immigrate to the U S or he, he was OTB there? off fresh off the boat German. Okay. His parents were fresh off the boat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's my, all my family came in through Ellis Island, yeah. New York, but yeah. German, Italian, Norwegian, Swedish. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is wild. Okay, so he did, he did logging over here and then mm -hmm. obviously that was the roots of the family, correct? Yeah. So then they started, um, lumber mills. They were, they're the, my ancestors are the Zigglers that started Ziggy's. Oh, no you know, way. Stores, yeah. No. Yeah. My, my grandmother's a Ziggler. And yeah. So they, out of here. they st used to be called people's lumber, I think, back in the day. And then Ziggy's now they're all over the place. So, wow. So, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. And as you can probably guess, I didn't see any of that. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. <laughs> I, man, I don't know. Wrong last name. It's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. So then that was your great, great grandfather. Mm -hmm. What's grand, what's grandpa doing? What'd he do? Same mills no he was uh my grandfather on that side uh he was an accountant oh, and okay. before that he was in the air force okay that story really? got boring. Okay. go the it, other side it, it, it got boring yeah, fast yeah, yeah, okay yeah. all right never mind that is so Canceled interesting though to see somebody that came over here yes and then went as many places as he did yeah he's in Coeur d'Alene Idaho dude lived a that's lot. wild west days too like that's, uh -huh. that's not yeah. no that's hard living right there Oof. Yeah, that's not like you just jump a train and just end up here. You got to. Do you know uh, that Wyatt Earp was a Kootenai County deputy? I just talked about oh, this. I did. Know. Oh, yeah, yes. I did. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. I've actually talked wow. about it a lot lately. I did. I was researching a video and I found it out, and I was like, "So we had uh, Bob Norris in here, the current Kootenai County Sheriff." Yeah, and we talked about it. And then uh, last week I had another guy, Dan Wilson, who's also running for Kootenai County Sheriff, and we talked about it there. I was like, "Damn." So uh, that's funny. This place must have been. Oh, dude. so badass! Oh yeah, a hundred years ago. Yeah, like I've I've read stories of the um, I mean, the brothels and uh -huh. the violence and yeah. just like, yeah, people oh, man, there people was, disappearing all the time. Well, there was no accountability up here, right? I right. mean, you're so far disconnected from all the major cities and everything else. I mean, to to call Spokane a major city back then is really, it, mm. I mean, that's an overstatement. Yeah. So, it wasn't even a city when my great great grandfather got married there. See? It was Spokane Falls. It was like unincorporated. Oh. So, I mean, you, yeah. you imagine, I mean, laws, regulations, everything else just didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. And we had the fort here and, uh, I read that, you know, the soldiers would go over to like maybe Wallace Kellogg. That's where all the good brothels were. And then like routinely they disappear. They'd never come back. Jeez. Yep. Murder. Gnarly. Murder and mayhem in Down Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, some good books out there. I also think that if. The good brothels <laughs> were probably pretty rough places in Silver Valley. There's I, a brothel for sale down here on Second Street. It's got eight rooms. Still, currently how do you uh, value the furniture, fixtures, and equipment <laughs> and, and staff of a brothel? I don't know. Just don't go in there with a the black light. That's all I know. Well, it's for sale. One point two. Little piece of history. You're a buyer. I did not know that. It's actually a great spot, but yeah, I didn't know that until I called. We were putting in an offer on that. Yeah. And I called and talked to the agent. He goes, "Hey, interesting fact." He goes, "This used to be a brothel." I'm like, I don't know if that's a selling. I don't know if that's that feature. Is or, I mean, like, I love BRB history. adding a bed bug contingency. <laughs> <laughs> I love that history, though. Yeah, hmm. interesting. So, um, how'd you get your start? In what well, you do when yeah, a mommy sorry. and a daddy yeah, no, love no, each no, other no, very I much, I should rephrase. <laughs> they that. hug in wow. a special way. <laughs> <laughs> I should rephrase that. It was a stork. <laughs> You know uh, what I, what do you, what do you like? Man? I'm looking at the, yeah, I'm behind you guys and I look tiny. Yeah. yeah that's where we put Eric. Cause like normally Eric's a, it's a, a perspective one. thing. I'm looking at this going, who's yeah. that little person back there? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's a, it's a perspective thing. Yeah, it's fun that way. Yeah, we put Eric, our other partner, back there all the time when we're doing stuff because he's 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 the shortest. He's the shortest. He's not here to defend himself. No, and say he's so the shortest. You know, not, yeah. Um, <laughs> you do look tiny in there. I'm closer. I'm not this big. Black is yeah. slimming. That's true. <laughs> that's mm. what, that's yes. what it is too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so his start. Uh, yeah, sorry. Get on uh, track. Start in what? I don't know. You got you well because you owned a bar at one time too, didn't you? Oh yeah. So you're you're following great grandpappy's. Uh, yeah, footsteps. I've done a few things for sure. Yeah. Uh, what's the quick and dirty? We'll say. Was a bad student. Dropped out of high school. Worked a bunch of jobs, mostly construction. Got a wild hair one day and said, "I'm gonna open a bar." Hmm. So I did. Owned what, it for three years. What bar was, was that? Uh, it was called Bureaucracy. In Spokane. I like the name. I like the name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, owned it for three years, was closing in on my 30th birthday, and thought to myself, do I really want to be around drunken degenerates till three in the morning for the rest of my natural mm-hmm. life? Valid. Also, there's just such limited right. earning potential Valid in the industry. Question. I think yeah. we all ask ourselves that question at some point in life, yeah. right? Yeah. So I put it up for sale and fortuitously sold it six months before lockdown. Oh, oh. wow. It's yes. gone. It's long gone now. Um, the guy lasted just over a year and shuttered the doors. Oh, so sucks. Sucks for him. Ooh, then jumped into real estate in the property inspection world with both feet, January 1 of 2020, which brings us to now. Yeah. And, and with that construction background, that helps a lot. In your yeah, it was, a, it was a super easy progression because I had a bunch of regulars at the bar who were real estate agents. And I told them, uh, you know, I want to get back into, they helped me buy and sell a couple of properties and I became friends with them and, they, I was telling them, I want to get back into construction because I still had my contractor license at the time, but I want to do an emphasis on buy and hold and flip properties. And they said, well, you should get your real estate license. We got a couple flippers in the office and so on. I thought, I don't know if that's for me. So they said, well, you understand customer service. You know how to talk to people. You've been building houses your whole life. Those skill sets kind of lean toward, you should be a home inspector because you know, understand like building science and you understand how to talk to people and you'll still be in the milieu and still have like deals coming across your desk. If you're friends with all of us. And I said, all right, let's do it. So I went and took the classes, got my license, got insurance, put my other business up for sale. And once that business sold, I dicked around for a few months, went fishing in Alaska and rode my motorcycle and stuff like that. (laughs) And then, uh, and then started the home inspection, you know, business full swing. Nice, dude. dude you know, you hit it at the perfect time, too. Yeah, right? and I think that's one of those things, too. With inspectors, it's, uh, it can be one of the very uh, turbulent times in a transaction. Yeah. Once you get an inspection done, and then you're like, oh, my goodness. And you have to explain to people. And I tell my clients all the time, like, look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like, inspectors are looking for possibility, not necessarily probability. There's definitely some things that are more probable than others, but they're going to look at every single aspect of the house. But one of the things that I think a lot of inspectors miss is the fact they can't communicate with people. And oh, that's super difficult. Yeah. Well, that was kind of one of the, I had a lot of good conversations with real estate agents before I got into the industry. And one of the things we talked about all the time was if you can, you can tell somebody good news, bad news, or otherwise, but how you present it is how it comes across and what's that's the important part. So yeah, we I've found that it's very, very common in this industry to be lacking communication abilities. Oh, yeah. I have had not you, I have had other inspectors um that have scared the crap out of people. Kill deals. Kill deals over it's like uh, it's not the yeah, yes. I think the would you say possibility, not probability? Yeah. That is is important to focus on because yeah. Like it's possible, but it's not like, well, it's like the, here, here's the common one, right? Uh, you need extensions on your drainage coming off your house. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you're Some of the spot. explanations that I see with that are like, it's going to erode the entire house. It's going to wash away. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be here in five years. Like, well, I'm not kidding. I think a big, <sighs> a big part of that problem in communication comes from the way that we learn in the classes that we take for your state licensure or whatever the classes that we take spend like 5% of the time teaching you how to do a good property inspection and 5% of the time teaching you how to run a business and communicate with people. And the other 90% is how not to get sued. So it breeds a mindset of protect yourself at all costs. Right. But you don't protect yourself at all costs by scaring the ever living crap out of people. You protect yourself by having a good contract, by having insurance and by communicating effectively. 
Right. So I think, you know, the, the, the age old problem of evaluation by a qualified contractor has recommended, you know, 57 times in a report is right. super unnecessary. I can write that once and the point gets across. Right. And the other thing is people who don't have that construction background, you can be a very good home inspector without a background in construction, but it's an uphill battle. If you haven't remodeled houses, built houses, and don't have the background that allows you to contextualize defects in terms of need to do versus nice to do, or what I like to call, this is a Home Depot fix versus a contractor fix. Right. If you can't contextualize that for people, it's very difficult for, you, for them to be able to parse that information on their own. You know, for example, your VA buyer that needs GFCI receptacles in the kitchen. Right. Dude, that's 20 bucks and 15 minutes with a combination screwdriver. This is not a blowing the deal type thing. Right, <laughs> it's right. really straightforward. Your downspout extensions on the, on the diverters for your gutters. Again, you can go buy that crap. You can get a plastic splash block yes. at Home Depot for $15 <laughs> and you're and set. There's an extra 24 inches right there. Yep. That's all you need. It doesn't have to be the sky is falling over right. things like that. But without a background in actually building and remodeling houses, it takes you a long time to figure that out. Right. That's yeah, <clears throat> man. I've had some, yes, some tough ones that have frustrated the hell out. There's of also me. a really low barrier to entry to yeah. become a property inspector. So, particularly in Idaho, there's no licensing requirement. So, like you could go out and legally do a home inspection today if you wanted to. Yeah. So, any old person can do it. Yep. Which means any old person does try to do it. Yep. There's no barrier to entry. I mean, even realtors. Come on, we've seen some. Brother. We've seen some agents that Brother. really should not be in the industry. Uh, 100%. Even they have way more, way higher barrier to entry than being a home inspector in, in this Which state. is shocking because there is a lot of liability on your side. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, and I've always notched it up to CYA. Like, and I've told my clients that too. Like, all right, you're getting the worst case scenario because this person is worried about getting sued. Like, and that's yeah. a legitimate concern that could happen. So, Well, it's some, it is going to happen. Yes. You, you know, I, I haven't yet been sued um i've been done about 1500 residential inspections at this point and Ooh. and i haven't yet but it, i mean no matter how good you take care of people it's you're gonna come across a litigious a-hole at some point who just wants a freebie yeah yeah in any business if you deal with enough clients the probability is not in your favor you're going to get sued well that's why you have insurance and you have an attorney and you know and yeah you yeah, have I good mean, contracts. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You just accept it when it happens and deal with it. Yeah. So, I mean, same thing for us. Like, it's always that possibility is there. No matter how perfect you try to do it and how well you communicate, someone is going to do it. And then, yeah, that's why we have insurance. Um, You guys, it, did you just get into commercial or not just, but I know you were getting into commercial inspections too. Is that a thing? Yeah. Last couple of years, we've really layered in a lot of that. Is now that it's very, is that a very specialized niche? Like, cause not everybody does that, right? No, there's really only one other legitimate competitor in this area for our company that that does a significant amount of business. There's a lot of people that dabble, but dabblers it, it, part time. Yeah, it it takes a completely different approach. People are looking for on commercial properties, looking for an assessment, right? It, with, with residential real estate, you'll lose contracts due to somebody not liking the friggin' chandelier in the dining room, right? right? Silly things like that, emotional decisions. Commercial real estate, by and large. It's dollars and cents. It's a spreadsheet. So what they're looking at is to have me come in and say, this is broken. This is aging. This is good. Here's what it's going to cost you to fix over the next 10 years and so on and so forth. Is it an mm. investment that's worthy of my time? So it's a completely different approach. It's very analytical and robotic. And the nice thing is you don't have to have that kid glove type mm. communication with people yeah. about things. If the roof is totally busted, look, the roof is totally busted. You don't have to dance around the subject and say, oh, well, you might get two more years. And you stretch it, but if we could be a windstorm in November. <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier to communicate with people that are <laughs> writing a check for $5 million than people who are writing a check for half a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Do you recommend that people, when people are buying new construction, Hayden Homes, Greenstone, Architera, whatever else, they get a private inspection on them? Yeah, totally. Why is that? So I can make money. Okay. Duh. <laughs> No, <laughs> check. No. You know, a lot of people um, ask me that. They're like, well, should I? And I'm like, well, man, I, you know, I always encourage people to get one. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. is that something that's common to have issues with? So it is.
common to have little things. I don't see big stuff very often. Okay. We look at a lot of new builds and a lot of the project managers don't like a third party coming in because okay. we get nitpicky on new builds. I don't get nitpicky on a hundred year old house. If there's scratches in the wood flooring of a hundred year old house, I'm going to say, Hey, Dave, there's, there's scratches in the floor. It's a right. hundred years old. And you're going to say, yeah, I know it's a hundred year old house. It's a brothel. What do you expect? Yeah. It's a brothel, man. <laughs> but with a new build, if they goofed up on hanging a door, they should fix it. Yeah. So right. we get nitpicky with that stuff. And, but we don't really see a lot of huge issues. One, I can think of one specific house where we had major problems on a new build. And it was just, it was during 2021 when everything was going up super fast. Oh, yeah. These home building, these big outfits were getting any subs they could get to do every trade. And they were pulling them in from other markets. And we had some serious like framing issues where they, modified and engineered trust to anyway it was bad it was it was Ooh, bad yeah and but that one was the only one that we had major problems on a new build usually it's little stuff i'll find like a little crack in the corner of a window or door that's off kilter or occasionally they'll run a ridge cap on the roof too long without trimming it back and that's a you know the wind is going to pick that up and peel it off and little things like that but the, you, you have usually a one-year builder's warranty so you pay us a few hundred bucks. We come in and find all this little stuff that the project manager doesn't have time to go look at when he's handing over the keys. And you have that year to go in and get those little things tuned up okay. for free instead of paying some guy three or four years down the road to fix a little bit of downstream damage from things like that. No, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I think that's smart. It's definitely a good idea to get one. We just had one recently and the you know, inspector picked up like, I don't know, eight or 10 things. And some were stupid. It was like, a self-closing hinge on the garage door, which oh yeah, I don't personally care about at all. But it's fire code. Uh, yeah, right. It's code, so it should be there. Like it's a new build. Why not? How'd they miss that? I don't know. Yeah, we don't we don't go you know too crazy on new builds on little like purely cosmetic things because what I tell people is you you're gonna get a blue tape day. You're gonna get a day right. where you walk through with the PM and you get in most cases literally a roll of blue painters tape. And you can flag little things that you think if someone was bringing the cabinets in and they put a little scrape in your LVP flooring, or if they bumped into a wall and you have a dent in the drywall, you go through with the project manager and you say, fix this, fix this, fix this, fix this. A little bit of funky grout in the backsplash, fix this. So we don't go into every little granular detail on that stuff. But if it's, you know, something that needs to be fixed, yeah, we're going to call it out. Right. You're do paying you, me for it. Do you see, without saying names, I don't know if that would be right, but do you see a, a variety of uh, quality levels in some of the builders up here? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I'm not going to say which ones. You but, can tell us a private yeah. later. But th yeah, there are, there, are certain, there are certain builders where I know that this development in Rathdrum is going to have similar issues as the same builder's development in Spokane Valley mm -hmm. and Airway Heights. And whereas, yeah, there's consistency among the types of things that go, that get missed among builders. Is that because of the subs they're using or is that just their practice? Like, well, that's, that's weird. Well, <clears throat> one of my good buddies used to be a project manager for one of those companies that someone mentioned. And they had a pretty, pretty bad habit of saying, we want to give people the best quality we can give them at this cost, not the best quality period, right? The best quality we can give them while staying in this margin. Right. And he had a real problem with that because that meant that when his subs did sloppy work and they're doing sloppy work because they're not getting paid, they're getting, they're getting, they're getting a pittance. They're getting a very, very small amount of labor costs compared to if they went out and did a custom home. But so they make up for it in volume. And when you make up for it in volume, you know, you become the Walmart of builders, right? It's right. all cheap crap. So they yeah, they're they want to get stuff cranked out really fast and they'll let stuff slide as long as the client will let it slide. Yeah. But if the client comes to the project manager and says, Hey goofball, this door is messed up, this roofing needs to be fixed, then typically they'll take care of it. Yeah. I've seen a few that are new homes where I walk through and I'm like, man. Like this is, and it's past blue tape. Yeah. Right? They've already done it just because it's a spec home or whatever else. And I've walked through and like, oh my goodness. I've also seen some lately that I'm pretty impressed with like mm -hmm. finish quality. I'm like, eh, 
Yeah. It's yeah, getting a lot nice. better now yeah. than it was in 2020, 21, 22. Yeah. It but, slowed down and it's getting a lot better. Like you can walk in and just the feeling of the flooring and looking at the trim. And like, when I look at all that, I'm like, all right, it's like a feel of like, all right, it feels better. Yeah. I've definitely seen some of that lately, which is, that's a good thing to see. Yeah, Part we, of that too is we were getting screwed on materials. Oh, right. They were making do with green lumber that, you know, a, a unit of two by four shows up and it looks basically like a bunch of bananas, <laughs> you know, and wow. you, you frame walls out of that. And yeah. when it dries out, it just get what you get. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. That's, yeah. That's bad. Just not dried, huh? <clears throat> Where do, does most of it come from Idaho forest group up here? Or is it, is it sourced locally or is that other, I don't know. I would hmm. hope just for shipping costs. Right. But well, I don't know. That's you ever see, you see I think Brian Regan talks a log about it. You ever see, yeah. yeah. One log going this way and you see a log going the other way and you're like, man, a phone call would save a lot of trouble. You had logs? <laughs> yeah. You got logs over there? <laughs> yes, you've seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Same commodity passing each other. And I'm like, huh, you gotta be kidding. Yeah. I just looked at the back of a pack of eggs the other day. Wilcox Farms. All of our eggs are raised in uh, Washington, Oregon, and Montana, I think they said. And they showed this picture of where the shipping lines go. And the there was like a line, I think, from Portland, Oregon over to, I don't know, Wyoming. But the line from Montana didn't go down. That doesn't so much closer. I'm Same not a mathematician, place. but wait a second. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your biggest pet peeve up here in the wintertime? Oh, I'm excited already. That smile says it all. Biggest People who have ill-equipped vehicles. And don't know how to drive. It's like I knew he was going to say that. You know, I got rid How do you not have anywhere to go every day? You just get in your car and amble around with no purpose in the world. Slipping and sliding on your friggin' bald tires on your two-wheel drive Prius. <laughs> Christ. Okay, so I'll friggin say Friggin' drive. Get you know, some winter tires. I got... Anytime... So, in law enforcement up here... When obviously when it snows, you're like, oh, here it goes. Like, this is my day. Crash city. Yeah, yeah. 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 TC's everywhere. Um, they say crashes up here, not TC's though. Yeah. Totally blew my mind. Anyway, I go with both. But, um, but you know TC? what? Traffic, Traffic collision. collision. Mm -hmm. Jinx. So <laughs> I said TC once over the other, like, what? I'm like, uh, crash. <laughs> yes. I also called timeout. I also called, uh, so Mullen, I was, <laughs> I made a, I made a traffic stop on Mullen. It's like, oh, I'm you know, Mullen and 16th. I, I called it Mulan. They I've go, seen the movie. Bro. Yeah, and dispatch movie. comes over and they're like, you mean Mullen? I'm like, you know exactly where I am. You don't need to correct me. <laughs> There's no question where I am. You don't need to correct me. Or I send me a, send me a message. Say that's not, uh, um, where? Oh. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Two L's. Anyway, Stop most it. of the accidents that I ran into were caused by people with four wheel drive. And I don't know if it's an overconfidence thing or overconfidence people move up thing. here and they're like, I have four wheel drive. I'm yeah. good. It doesn't help you stop. It helps you go. Th that's the yeah. craziest thing too. It's not, we all have four wheel stop, but unless you have good winter tires, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's not. That's yeah. a great point. We all have four wheel stop. That is so good. <laughs> yeah. Cause I got, I got rear ended and she got it. She's like, I have four wheel drive. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. No, that's that first the first thing she said. First thing no she said. Oh, and I'm like, gosh. Yeah. and I was stopped. And oh my God. Go back from whence you came <laughs> okay so drivers in the winter yeah i, I set them up for that that one. was I, a I, I knew i like to give people a hard time yeah he gets fired up about this no i just like to have fun with it okay good uh yeah i mean but it's a big deal i'll still stop and pull people out of the ditch i'm not a total dick about it yeah <laughs> I, I think you're right but, but i will give them hell while i'm pulling them out of the ditch yeah i used to have to do that uh, we'd get snow where i worked in California as a cop, I, we would get s snow up in the hills and it was every time, every time. So we'd go up there and freaking pull people out, pull people out nonstop. Super annoying. Right. Um, yeah. So you, yeah, you give them a little rash of shit while you're at it too. Oh yeah. Like, we had a, get a lecture with that free toe that I just gave you. You get a lecture. I was going up a couple months ago. I, I just had a baby last fall and we were in the hospital and I was going up to the hospital and we had one of those snowstorms, you know, like happens in the winter time. And the the two roads that go up the hill to the hospital were completely blocked off and people were taking detours and i thought well yeah it's a hill and if 
you don't have proper tires and then it's going to be tough. And what I found was both of the blockages that were, that were stopping traffic were ambulances. Like sideways? Yes. Oh, I'm oh, thinking, man. okay, AMR, whatever. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. You've op- you operate this business in a climate that gets wintertime conditions. Yeah. You're not equipping your ambulance. It's an ambulance. It's pretty crucial to be able to go places. That thing needs snow tires for sure. Yeah, and they were Chains, both. whatever. Two roads blocked off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have, I'm shocked like at how good, good snow tires are. Oh, it's monumental. Unbelievable. The only people that will tell you, I don't need snow tires is people who have not run them. Yeah. Okay. Because so I, it's I, a tremendous difference. Yeah. I just, it, it is. And I did not, I didn't know how much of a difference, a difference it was. My wife has a Tahoe and it's four wheel drive and I wanted to beat the rush of getting everything off. So I took off her snow tires about mm. two and a half weeks ago. Oh my okay? God. Before like, fourth God. winter. Yeah. Yeah. Before oh, yeah. fourth winter. Yeah. I know we're done now. Finally, sure. I took those snow tires off and I'm like, okay, man, I, yeah, is there's a huge difference. You're filled that, with regret. And everybody thinks snow tires have to be studs too. And we don't have studded tires. Like I ours are just them the, without them. Right. Yeah. yeah. They run softer, everything else. They don't sound like that. But if you have, if you have the snow tires that are just, they have tons of siping, they're super soft. They do. They make a crazy bit of difference yeah different rubber compound and yeah. and tread block pattern it's it's hugely beneficial here's yeah. my experience with studs since you scoffed at me uh and i know this isn't the same but we would put them on our crown fix in a certain area that i worked at in california because mm-hmm. we needed them in the mountains but if you try to flip on a car on the freeway and by flip i mean turn on them because they're speeding oh. at speed you will fuck it's like on ice oh, skates yeah. that thing yeah so on pavement that's yes on dry pavement <laughs> yeah. with studs yeah studs on dry pavement's not ideal bad day so that's for yeah sure. i'm 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 like eternally scarred from that and I, that's why i'm like nah i don't want studs <laughs> yeah no studs i i don't i haven't found where up, i need them yeah you know, so jack up the roads we have winter and we have road construction season yeah. and i Just, think it's the most the annoying thing is when in the dead of summer when somebody ri- rides by you and you know they still have you studs like, yeah you're like what are you doing it's june oh yeah Just eating up the road mm-hmm. <laughs> idiots i do kind of think that truck semis do a lot more wear on the roads oh than for studs. sure yeah, so I'm not sure if I really am ever going to get to a point where I'm like, oh, save the roads, take off my studs. No question. Yeah. Trucks are way more. I don't judge you for if you have studs. Like, I'm not like that. I'm just. Yes, you like, judge I away? I don't personally judge away? run them. To my wife's cars, does my wife's car does not have studs. So. All wheel drive? I mean, you have but, to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you go to places, like, I know my, I guess I could too, but, like, you go to places where you might need them. I guess I could justify that for myself because I do sometimes, but well, you, we're in an area where like, if you're just driving around town, whatever, yeah, you get around on ding or anything. But when you get out to these rural properties and right, it's kind of nice to have every piece of help you can get. Yeah. Cause you don't want to have to put chains on to get out or in just, that's annoying. It, you know where Fernwood is? Yeah. I just, I just inspected a property down in Fernwood a couple of weeks ago and the client East coast client, nice gal showed up gnarly storm, barely got a skiff in Coeur d'Alene, but down there it was like five inches in the three hours I was at this house. So she rolls up in a Camry on bald tires, long twisty gravel road up to the property. And then the driveway off this road was downhill steep. She didn't get her car out. We tried for 45 minutes. I missed an appointment in Coeur d'Alene because we were trying to wow. get her car out. So I just drove her back to Coeur d'Alene. It's like, yeah, I guess you'll get it out later. <laughs> I hope you got a good Google review out of that one. I I, growing up, like I, snow tires were not a thing. I grew up in upstate New York and it was, the winters were worse than here. Oh, by, way worse. By far. Where, whereabouts? Um, Hyde Park, which is about, it's right on the Hudson River, about two hours north. So are you York, getting lake North effect City. snow over there? No, not that far. North. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, harsh and icy. And like, I don't know anybody that had snow tires when I was a kid. I had a two wheel front wheel drive car, bald ass tires. And I, I was unstoppable. I could go anywhere. I never got stuck. Like ever. Yeah. I don't know what it was. We didn't, we didn't really when I was a kid either, but I think people were just harder back then. And that's just a function of that. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> sure. I remember going to the ski resort and like, I'm going up this hill and it's just icy. My buddy's like pushing the car because we couldn't get enough momentum and it's just like barely going. And I'm just spinning the tires because they're bald. We got where we're going. Jeez. Yeah. Where are you from? 
<laughs> ah, I recognize the sigh. <laughs> so we built this table hmm. to look like where I lived from an aerial view. So like right here. <laughs> Sounds nice. Just in the middle of nowhere in the desert. You know where Palm Springs is? Yeah. Okay. Next step. Do you know where Joshua Tree is? Yeah. Perfect. There you go. That's it. The desert. I'm going to seed some ground here. <laughs> okay. My wife's from Southern California. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Where, where from? Uh, Antelope Valley. Oh. Okay. Just down the road from you. Yeah. Far reaches of LA County. There you go. Yeah. Way down there. Hmm. I went to LA twice <laughs> in 36 years living in Southern California. Really? Twice. Wow. And it was terrible. Both yeah. Times. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go there. Yeah. We lived out in the desert. Um, and it was, I mean, it's funny. We were talking about it the other day what we missed because we were talking about planning a trip back to go see everybody and just say hi and go see my dad and um, my wife's grandma. And we were talking about what we missed. And it was very little. Um, we did want to hike Joshua Tree again. We liked that. I mean, that was something that was that was nice to have out there. But it was the stars. Mm. I mean, man, I've never seen it oh, yeah. out there. Oh, my goodness. You could see. I mean, it looked like the photos. Yeah. Where you can see like the, the I mean, almost like the Milky Way and the gases. I mean, it was crazy. I think you can see how the, dark the, it was. The Milky Way at a, on like a really dark night. I, I've seen it. And well, it we're was, far enough away from yeah. light pollution here. But we have geographic difficulties yes. <laughs> we have terrain that gets in the way yeah. right out there you don't but you know, also right here forever. in town it, you don't have great stars right here in Coeur sure you got to get out a little bit yeah. you got to go up to Athol you got to yeah. go a little further um but yeah I mean that was the one thing that we really really missed yeah it's just the skies were incredible and they're always clear right yeah up here we got clouds all the time yeah that's true so that makes a big difference as well that's one thing my my wife moved up here like 12 years ago and then we got her parents up here a couple years ago and then her sister is now up here so now we don't have to go back and visit which is really Perfect. cool but that's one th they don't care for winter all that much and my father-in-law is a big time golfer right and it ain't the same you can golf 365 days a year down there you can't yeah. hear indoors I, i'll take your word for it i don't <laughs> know anything about golf <laughs> oh yeah there's you know what that is something that popped up there used to only be two or three places where you could do indoor golf i feel like over the past two years there's 15 or so indoor golf places simulators that you can go to now Highlands going just put one up. inside yeah to emulate they have beer an outdoor activity they have beer fast it's kind of like a brothel yeah, yeah. um i was just thinking like when will we get a top golf here? But that probably wouldn't work with snow. Huh? I don't think they would have, they, it, there just wouldn't be enough. But I will say, you know, people talk about the snow all the time. I was talking to somebody down South a bit and they're like, oh man, I just, I don't want to go up there because there's so much snow. And they're like, but it's so beautiful. And I'm like, well, that's why it's so beautiful. Yeah. Like you don't go to Hawaii and get pissed because it rains because that's why it's so green. It right. rains all the time. And the snow up here, I mean, that's just part of living up here. If you want to have the summers as pretty as they are, no wildfires and the yeah. greenery and everything. Yeah. You got to put up with oh, the snow. Man. It was epic this morning. Really I was out snow blowing and, uh, you know, the light was coming. It wasn't sunny because it was like fun. Stay the day too, that we're in March and you were snow blowing. Yeah. Nice that's work. Good. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. <laughs> we're full. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, man. The snow, the trees. Oh yeah. Was, that, that's where it's at. I love that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're full. There is something that special about, about like fresh snowfall. The way everything looks clean. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Quiet, quiet. It dampens the sound. Yeah. That's it's, a big one. So that's how I know it snowed. When I wake up in the morning, it sounds like you're in a tomb. Mm. Oh my God, it snowed last night. Yeah. It is so quiet. It is. It's really nice. So you living up here since how old? Since well, I, my parents moved out of state to multiple locations, Alaska, Texas, before I was born. And they had me when they lived in Texas okay. and then moved back here when I was seven. So you've been here since you were seven. Yeah. What was, you know, I, I, I like asking people, how old are you? 34. Okay. What was school like? I mean, obviously, I, you know, I remember people telling me that like Prairie was like the, the furthest North paved road out here. I mean, what was, school yeah, that like was when before my time for right. sure. I mean, when you get to high school here, I've talked to guys that said like, they used to go to high school and they'd, they'd bring their, their guns to school. And they'd lock them up and then they go hunting with the teacher after. Yeah. Is that during your time? Or I think, little... I think, I think that's, uh, every rural kid says that. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily true. No, I've talked to a few of them. In fact, one of our guys at PD is crazy. They used to take their shotguns in and they would actually go hunting after school. We definitely had that culture. Um, I don't, I don't know if it ever really occurred to me whether or not there was a gun in my rig. 
probably. I guess there probably was. Yeah. Now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it was just completely yeah. different times because you probably went to. But I also dropped out of high school because I was a terrible student. So I missed some of that. I have a 10th grade education. Okay. So I didn't catch the whole thing. All right. Hmm. Look at you, an entrepreneur. Wow. Well, just killing it. Self unemployed. <laughs> Self unemployed. Way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but man. it never got in the way of uh, swinging a hammer for a living. <laughs> yeah. Nobody ever asked for a diploma. Does it, no. does it, does it, I know we joke about it, but does it really bug you that people continue to move here? Well, deep thoughts. Not necessarily the act of moving here because, you know, we all moved here, our ancestors moved here, whatever, but the thing that gets under my skin is when people move here and try to change it. Mm. So if you move here because you like everything that, that we're about, cool, you'll fit right in. But when you show up and you, and you bitch about stuff that you don't like, or you don't like it when people hunt. Sure. Okay, sure. Nice. Yeah. Does, does that yeah. actually happen or is this urban legend? I don't know. I, don't know. Well, I've never, I haven't met that person yet. I'm going to come down hard on a relative of mine <laughs> that did that. Okay. And has a lot of, uh, negative things to say about the country bumpkins out here, but like you left a place that was a giant steaming pile of dog crap to come here where everybody's nice and it's pleasant. So maybe take it easy on the uh, negative comments about how you think some things are backward. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think that's the prevailing um, sentiment. I think a lot of people are moving here because they like what this area has to offer. Yeah. But there, there are some of those, that I, element. I haven't bumped into it. I literally haven't bumped into those people yet. I don't know if you have or not, but all of the clients we've had from moving here from out of state are extremely like-minded. Not through this job, my previous job. Okay. I did. Yeah. Through this job. Like, and, and I get that a lot. Our YouTube channel, we get like, stop telling people about Idaho. I'm like, I'm well, it's just a the, meme at this point. Uh, it is. It's it funny. is very much. It's it very is. cliche it's to not, say. It's yeah. not it's hidden. Of, People know where Idaho is. They know right. where Portland is. Yeah. We're not like exposing it for the right. first no. time. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. It's I've like people who say that here. about Montana. Yeah. Look, Western Montana was a ritzy, expensive place that I couldn't afford to live in since before I was born. Yeah. The secret's out. <laughs> it's yeah. out. I mean, I hear Florida is the same things are being said down there. I was looking at a florida youtube channel for real estate and they were the exact same comments we're full, yeah we're full we're full it's like okay full. okay i think the things that the things that people are resistant to change yeah. and i'm just as guilty of that as anybody else and when i see things like the traffic on 95 or the traffic on i-90 like well you know if i got rid of all the out-of-state plates around me i could travel at the friggin speed limit right now yeah. that'd be nice yeah so you know what yeah I think a lot of it too is when people change things, a lot of it's unintentional. It's built in perception on where they came from. I remember the first time I came yeah. up here, you know, I, I was in Costco, I was getting uh, fuel and I remember seeing a guy step out and he had a firearm on his side. Now I, I carry a firearm and I'm all about it, but I came from a place where you couldn't open carry. So, I mean, just seeing that was, I mean, I wanted to stare at him because I'm like, what is going on here? Like, yeah. this guy's got a gun. Sweet. And a it, gun and no badge. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you have those things kind of set, predetermined. And then, yeah. and then I, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It's about one of the things that's big, that's a big difference up here is there's a lot less, um, there's a lot less conforming to the government up here. There's a lot less rules and regulations. And there's going to be more because there's more people. That's just, it's how, if you study anthropology or you're watching that, that's just how it's going to work. But, you know, I had somebody come up and say, um, they talked to me because, oh, you're former law enforcement. Well, uh, you know, what should I do about my neighbor that was doing this, this, and this, and this? And I'm like, look, do you want more law enforcement in your <laughs> life? Do you want more rules, more regulations? Do you want somebody else to tell you how to live your life? go deal with it on your own. Go have a conversation with that person. And, but people don't think about that down in California. If there's an issue and somebody's dog's barking, you call 911 and you tell them, Hey, this dog, you know, oh. and then, and then they get in the way and then it's, you know, it's just this yes. litigation and everything else. Don't do that. I mean, I'm not telling you to go next door and pound your neighbor because they, you know, they didn't conform. But the truth is, is like, for the most part, people need to realize that the, the ways that things were done where they came from, they inadvertently bring here. I know I did. I'm sure anybody did. It takes you a second to step out. I makes drove, sense. I was the fastest driver on the road for the first oh, four yeah. weeks. I mean, I'm like trying to fight people on the road and all of a sudden <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. 
everybody's really nice up here. I, I can drive the speed limit. Well, I can, dude, the way people I, drive in California, they're, they drive so fast. You have to, so when you get fast. to work, you are sweating because it was a fight just yeah. to get there. Dude, yeah. if, if like when I went down to visit my relatives down there, it, I'm going 10 over and I have to be in the far right lane. Yeah. Yeah. We'll run you over because 10 over is <laughs> slow down there. Right. It's a, it, that's a long conversation, but like my, my patrol speed down there was like 80 plus everywhere because oh, I had to maintain a higher speed that you can't, you can't like, be jamming up traffic. <laughs> no. And you can't shut it all down. Like it's a culture now. You can't, Yeah, I don't know how you change that culture. So I think that's inadvertent. People have a tendency yeah. to bring things that they don't even realize that they're bringing. Mm. So it's important. Like we talk about assimilating into a culture, like, Hey, what's normal up here. Mm. You really need to look at it and say like, what, how, how do you live up here? What is it that, why am I moving up here? What are the things that I like about this place? Because if you don't preserve those, they're going to go away. People are already angry about traffic up here because we got too many people that are aggressive drivers now. Yeah. That's, and we don't have the infrastructure no. to support additional traffic. No, no, no. There is no way to put extra lanes. Right. on these highways luckily no. they just did 41 which is yeah that's taking a huge and, and 90 they're gonna make it three lanes all the way that that'll help yeah. a lot um but yeah because you're guaranteed to get jammed up in post falls and liberty lake yeah and before you hit downtown spokane yep either direction idaho jammed up yeah <laughs> yeah not like uh well, <laughs> well if there's a crash sometimes it's a, it's a long one they don't know how to crash. clear they don't know how to clear freeways up here like we that's did. true and man the rubbernecking is something else <clears throat> yeah i've seen too many times this is a pet peeve of mine non-injury crash cars are just still sitting in the lane get out like, of the road get out the fucking road when we would roll up on a crash oh, like yeah. that oh dude i would get in the car i would drive that shit off the road if i, if yeah. I had to i would shove it with my car like whatever you got to do clear lanes yeah well For you know what they're God. locally they're good with that i know that for Coeur d'Alene, for sure, that was like a thing. We would get on scene and you're like, hey, can your car move? Yeah, yeah. then move it. You need to pick, take a picture. No, I don't. Move your car. Like you're it's in the fine. way. Nobody this is hazardous. Get out of the way. Yep. Yeah. Pet peeve. Big time. When did you exit law enforcement? Mm, August 1st, 2021. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a good time. <clears throat> yeah. He was a firefighter for a really long time first, hence the helmet. Yeah. Oh, I didn't you did both? I did. Wow. Yeah. That was wow. It was phenomenal. That's Doing cool. Both. It's good. You get to it. see, get to see all sides of it. Oh yeah. I always wanted to be a firefighter. But when I was a fireman, we'd just leave the lanes closed. We didn't care. No. We'd make CHP yeah, tell us. CHP would get pissed off at you. <laughs> I always thought fire would be cool, but seeing the state of things now, I it was cool. It started to change. Yeah. I don't want to just be fighting junkies. No. That, day it in, depends day where you work, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Medical calls for freaking overdoses all day long yeah. like no 2010 2011 no. things started to change drastically yeah it was very very different prior to that yeah uh, yeah it could be a fun job i think I, the adventure of the job is what like yeah even even my job like the adventure of it and it wasn't the normal day-to-day -day stuff it was the out outside of that you know the big natural disasters the deployments all of that that is what when you were highway patrol right yeah so you get to see a little of everything yeah yeah, right. They'd, we, they'd bring you over to riots and stuff too. And yeah, we would you're do, not just writing tickets all day. No, we would do riots. I got sent to Cleveland, Ohio, and deputized by Cleveland PD for um, an event there. We got you know all over the place: fires, floods, all that shit. It was That's kind of That's cool. the fun stuff. Yeah, writing tickets all day. Yeah. No fun. No. Yeah. On that note, I don't know how we started talking about cops. Uh, we're almost to an hour, fellas. Mm. You know, I know we got stuff to do. Dave's just. Got an offer to me that I need to deal with. And I need and you to give me a response. response. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Goodness. You got to go to work. I do have to go to work. Got to go look at an office building at State Line. Oh, nice. Near State Line. Get some. Well, uh, thank you. That was a fun conversation. We talked about a variety of topics, and um, this was better than grabbing coffee, I think. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I'd grab coffee anyway. <laughs> I know. I didn't. Now I need yeah. to go do that. Uh, thank you, Tyler. So Tyler Riggs with Liberty Inspection Services. You guys go, uh, obviously, Washington and Idaho, right? Yeah. Anywhere else. We offer the largest selection of property inspection services to the largest territory of any company in the region. Well, dang. Done. How many? You got multiple employees? Mm-hmm. Dude. Yeah. Damn. Filled out the crew, man. Radon tests, well drawdown tests, sewer scopes, mold sampling, seven-day-a-week office coverage, uh, e-key access in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, Selkirk Associations. And so on and so forth. Dude. Nice. Nice yeah. done. Well, thank you. Uh, we will, um, I need two things from you. I need a cool picture and then I need some links. I can find them online too. We'll link your business in the uh, description yeah. so you guys can find them if needed. 
I didn't think we were actually going to talk about real estate stuff and yeah, sure I mean, enough, we, we barely did. did. We, we, <laughs> we just, took I'm wondering how we dabbled. got away from, uh, the normal things I talk about, which are eat elk, make babies. God, next time. We'll do it again. Next time, and we'll talk time. about eating elk and making ba- eating babies and making elk. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>